Right, so what we're going to start looking at is just the idea of multiple final elements. So I'm going to break it down into a couple of steps. So first one, I'm just going to talk about um, the idea of multiple final elements and maybe the numbering scheme that we'll follow. So that will be the this will be the first video. So let's start with the structure that we have now. A big structure here with the loading will be applied, some force that will be applied to that structure. So that's something we've seen before. In the past, we modeled this whole structure with a single finite element. Now we're going to break it down and say let's model it with two finite elements, and this will be finite element one, and this will be finite element two. Okay. And then what we have is essentially is saying we're going to mesh each element. So there's my mesh for this element, and here's my mesh for the second element. Okay. And each uh, node has got associated x values. That's what we have. Each one has got its own associated x value. Okay. And now this is what we have. Uh, not just does it have its associated x value, it also has associated unknowns. Yeah? Just remember, each node that we put down has an unknown displacement in x for these 1D um, uh, final element cases. So this is I'm going to call Q1. This I'm going to call Q2. Q3. Q4. Q5. Okay, so they are all my unknowns as well that I've got. Okay, so this is just on a global scale. So what we can say globally, um, just to make this X here, is that this is what I will call node number one in the global system. So this is what I call global. Node number one, node number two, node number three, node number four, node number five. That's just uh, so that I know what's going on, okay, in the global scale. And so what it what it implies is when we have a stiffness matrix, when we think about a big stiffness matrix, we will have essentially a force balance at node 1, a force balance at node 2, a force balance at node 3. So each row, remember, is the force balance, node 4 and node 5. And then each column will be associated with an unknown. This will be associated with Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4. Q5. And that's what we have with those unknowns there. And obviously then we'll multiply this with this vector of Q1 up and until Q5 as the unknowns. Okay, so that's beautiful. Oh, that was a little bit... So all I've written is so it's, it's just, just off. Q1, Q5. Okay, so that's that's close. All right, so it's getting dark on that side of the screen. I can see that's not great. Okay, but this is uh, step one. Okay, so maybe I'll just see. I could just lift this quickly up. I think this should be better. Not really. Attempt. Uh, it's not really better. Okay, doesn't matter. At least this is still clear. Okay, so what we have is essentially is now the following. We're setting with Q1 to Q5 in the global system. We have a big stiffness matrix where we will slot in information about the, the system. So first off, um, this is just to get sh make sure that we have some global system and global numbering scheme. Okay. Now the next question will be, how does this relate to our stiffness that we can compute per element? And that's what I'm going to do in the next video.